Hi, uh, today's session I'll be talking about endometriosis. It is one of the most common cause for uh, infertility among women with reproductive age group. If we see uh, about uh, 100 women, about 8 to 10 percent women will be present, will be suffering from endometriosis. Among those who present with infertility, it is almost about 20 to 25 percent who present with endometriosis. So what is this endometriosis and how does it affect fertility and what are the treatment options available for it is what we will be discussing today. So uh, the word in, in, in endometriosis, it is a condition wherein as we know, the period, as whenever the woman gets her period, the endometrium, that inner lining of the uterus, gets shedded off as bleeding. But in some situations, in some people, it, it in, you know, a small bits of the endometrium uh, passes itself into the reverse direction, enters the tube, goes to the ovary, settles in the pelvis, or various organs in the body, and thus leading to the development of endometrium. And there, it gets uh, attached and starts growing there. And every cycle, it starts bleeding there, developing the formation. In case of ovary, it leads to the formation of cyst. In on the tubes, it can form endometrial implants. So thus, the disease progresses. And uh, there are various theories has been proposed what could be the possible cause for this. One, as I told you, retrograde menstruation where a small bits of uh, the endometrial tissue goes off in the reverse direction. Second thing, uh, the uh, tissue itself might undergo certain changes and starts growing as endometrium in certain parts of the body. Or uh, through the lymphatic roots, the endometrial tissues might get spreaded off to the other parts in the pelvis. So there are various theories which, can propose, which, which has proposed the cause of endometriosis. Similarly, what are the other causes such as it could be genetically related, which has been proven, especially when the first degree relative, that is the mother or the sister, is suffering from endometriosis. There is a 50% chance that the, uh, the that the second sibling can also have endometriosis. So it is proven to have a genetic incidence. Uh, there are uh, various uh, features and how does it present and how do we know that one has endometriosis or can uh, need to see a doctor when there is a problem. So, with the onset of period when somebody uh, experiences too much of uh, pain during periods called dysmenorrhea, especially a congestive type of dysmenorrhea and those who have uh, the dyspareunia experiencing lot of pain while keeping contact with the husband and dyschezia that is whenever uh, sometimes during the time of periods even passing of stools may be painful. So, uh, all these things put together can uh, give a suspicion towards endometrial. That's how an endometriotic patient would present. The fourth uh, common cause is infertility. Uh, not all endometriotic patients are infertile, but almost uh, 35 to 40 percent of them do present with infertility or having difficulties, or I would like to call it subfertility, having difficulties in conceiving. Why so? Why does it cause so much of difficulty? As I told you, whenever uh, these endometriotic implants, that is the endometrium is nothing but the inner lining of the uterus, part of it is uh, already is, is settled or implanted on the tubes, ovary, pelvis, on the various structures within the pelvis. So what happens is every time when a woman gets her periods, just like the way the endometrium behaves itself in the uterus, these implants also undergo similar changes and starts bleeding every menstrual cycle. So whenever it starts bleeding every menstrual cycle inside, it causes blood collection there, resulting in many inflammatory reactions, release of certain chemokines, cytokines, which can be toxic to the development of the egg. And also at the time of ovulation, when the sperm enters the tube, it can be toxic to the sperm as well, causing damage to the egg and the sperms. And also because of this bleeding, which happens month on month, it can cause additions, wherein the tubes, ovaries or the bowel get stuck to each other and which can affect the motility of the tube. The function of the tube during a period is that it needs to pick the egg and keep it inside, inside itself so that the pregnancy happens. So it needs to be a mobile structure. So because of all these things, the tubal function gets affected. It can be toxic to the growing uh, egg or the oocyte, uh, will not allow a good or embryo egg to grow. It can be toxic to the sperm that enters the tube at the time of ovulation. And also it sometimes affects the complete release of the egg from the follicle or from the ovary. And it has an impact on the implantation, meaning once the embryo is formed and it enters the uterus, it needs to attach itself to the inner lining of the uterus. Because a woman presenting with endometriosis, it can affect 
another and embryo attaching to itself and also most importantly it is known to affect the ovarian reserve so we all have uh, every woman has a preset of x which she need to which in a way uh, which ovulates regularly with endometriosis the number of x that is present in the ovary will keep on reducing much faster than what happens to women who does not have endometriosis because of all these factors she is prone for developing subfertility meaning where she has difficulty in conceiving so this doesn't mean she can never conceive in life definitely one can conceive with endometriosis when it is identified early and treated accordingly so most important thing that one should remember is early identification of the disease and planning the treatment as early as possible especially when she is presenting with infertility so how do we diagnose the disease this diagnosis can be done based on an ultrasonography where we see the presence of endometriotic cyst within the ovary uh, but however the best and the gold standard method to evaluate endometriosis is to perform a laparoscopy once we place the camera inside the abdomen we can visualize the disease correct it and also stage the disease simultaneously so when we stage the disease we will be able to decide the type of treatment that we need, that a woman needs to con uh, required for her to conceive so the best method of diagnosis and treatment for endometriosis is to go with laparoscopy but if a person has already undergone a laparoscopic ovarian cystectomy where the endometriotic cyst has already been removed there, then the subsequent surgery should be very very carefully thought of because it can further cause damage to the normal ovarian tissue and further worsen the uh, chances of pregnancy so oh, multiple surgeries in case of endometriosis should be avoided so uh, once we do a laparoscopy and identify the stage of the disease then we can plan for treatment Uh, for those who are in minimal and mild form of disease that is called stage 1 or stage 2 of endometriosis then simple treatment like iui would be beneficial but if we ask if we look at whether iui or natural contact which is better definitely iui is better in them that to be planned immediately after laparoscopy and uh, whereas in those with th stage 3 or stage 4 endometriosis in them the best treatment would be to go for ivf as early as possible and most of the treatment is advisable immediately after performing laparoscopy because the endometriosis is a progressive disease even after complete removal there is a high chance of it recurring a few years later so earlier the treatment better is the prognosis so it is not something that we have to really worry about but one needs to identify the disease early and it can be tackled very carefully thank you